Um, yes. So I'm going to uh, discuss uh, what, oh, God, I think. what you can see open ended evolution in the web systems and the computer so simulations. I don't think so we have two the last okay. examples. The uh, first one is um, uh, the main message of, from my talk is um, well, we just increase the size of the population, uh, increasing the size so, um, of the population. Uh, naturally, these uh, open ended evolution is something I want to do. And then Doing this, yes. Yes. Um, okay. uh, there is a one. transition from a co uh, quantity to quality okay. beyond a critical size. So the question is where, where, whether there is a, such a critical size exists or not. So I'm, I'm looking at this one. And the third one is a transition um, from um, dynamic to combinatorial complexity, which you can also um, uh, expect by increasing the size of the population. So. So th this one is I I, um, <clears throat> I gave a talk uh, last year, but so using the Craig Reynolds uh, simple uh, border model, then you can see it's just a simple like structures that emerges. It's a uh, population size of the simulation is about 256, but these days you can use GPU and then you can scale up the population size. And then the question is what you can expect. Is there any the similar uh, structures, or is there any other new kind of structure emerges above certain uh, critical size? So uh, what I shown uh, two years ago is like uh, uh, size of the population is two to the eleventh. Then there is a okay. By the way, there's this simulation with the same parameter size, but uh, density is same, just increasing the space, keeping the density equal. Um, then up to two to the fourteenth. Some different structure it slowly emerges, and this is to the, the 17. So it becomes something different. Uh, people don't think it, this one is a browser flocking. It's, it's more a uh, uh, different structure emerges. This is two to the 19th. So it's so the qualitatively different. So I'm just interested in what makes this kind of transitions from a uh, simple tube formation parameters to uh, to small, you know, uh, tubes and bu bubbles is created, right? So I looked into the uh, susceptibility of the different flockings, right? So if the number of individuals is lower than 10 to the third or 10 to the fourth, yes. uh, then a fluctuation of the dire a head dire yes. heading yes. direction is a, a dominant fluctuation, right? But above 10 to the third to 10 to the fourth, Local density is a, a yes, dominant flocking. So you cannot expect a, a flocking behavior with a, a local density fluctuation yes, dominancy. You can't see it, you know, a, okay. less than the population size equal to the 10 to the third. So I think, so there are different types of fluctuation that you can expect about this one. So, um, so I think this is one with a critical uh, size um, you can expect in the flocking. Okay. The second example is um, uh, social tagging services. So I, I've been studying this one for like three, three years. So this is the web services. Is um, uh, people, users are submitting uh, photos with tags. So, so it's a social tagging system services. Okay. So one photo with several tags. Um, so starting with this photo with uh, three tags like uh, on the lawn, plant, entrance. But later. The photos that becomes like this, and then a bunch of different types of tags came out. Right? Oh, so it's in Japanese. But then we look up how the population size changes. So it's so gradually changing, right? So so the sign up users is the above figure is gradually increasing, and also the number of photos are submitted by the users is also increasing. So the question is like I. Um, I investigated in the body simulation. Is there any critical size of the users in this website? And then whether there is a structural changes or anything that happens in this uh, real data set th things. The first of all, um, so we noticed that so it takes number of annotations and number of distinct tags. Uh, there is some so, so in sharp transitions and it goes to some some. Uh, Fitting to the curve, uh, which is uh, almost 
x1 is equal to 1. But this one is the number of photos and the number of distinct tags. So it's, there is some um, transition from uh, around the number of photos is around 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth. So maybe there is, this is just an initial um, transient phenomena, but you can also expect something happens before and after this uh, tipping point. So we looked into the different, uh, not only these uh, uh, room, uh, room clips, but comparing with the different social network, net network services, like uh, delicious or clickers, room clips, and how, you know, um, novel, novel tags, new tags uh, submitted with a photo. So apparently, um, so this is the daily fluctuation of tags, and this is the horizontal axis is a cumulative number of annotations. So the novelty is unfortunately decreasing. So the numbers we use are increasing, but the novelty is uh, decreasing. Novelty in terms of new tags per, uh, created per day. So I so we looked into the co-occurrence of tags. Maybe there is some uh, evolution happens once the tag, novel tag is, is in, innovated. Then those tags uh, try to uh, bringing up new tags. So it's, it's more like a, that's what I said, combinatorial evolution is emerging from uh, just a mutation making uh, new tags, but those tags will uh, to inducing other new tags to come up and coupling with those tags. So um, again, I'm comparing with the delicious flickers and room clips. Then after like uh, two year, three years, uh, almost three, uh, 2.5 years, there's some tipping points. So um, now the vertical lines are distinct pairs of tags, not just single tags. The number of pairs is increasing abruptly at a certain period of time. So I'm just wondering, you know, uh, maybe the, the first, initial, first three, two years is more like uh, creating a novel tax, but after 2.5 years, there's a, a creation of a coupling. So combinatorial uh, complexity is emerging after this tipping point. But that's what uh, we can uh, guess from here. Um, so I looked into the, to the each tags, so those number, those uh, sofa or cafe place or uh, IKEA is the number of tags that it was associated with the photo uh, submissions. Then um, the black one is how many uh, number of tags that is com 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 combined when they are uh, submitted. The red one is how many new tags came up with the, with when the tag is, is submitted. So um, when, for example, this one is when the pet uh, submitted, <coughs> then after um, number of photos is so it's around uh, two two thousand um, submissions of photos. This uh, the pets is combined with the new tags, means that when when you want to use the pets as a new tag, you want to put another tags. So the pet is inducing novel tags to come up with. So I just want you know. Um, Maybe, so there's, usually uh, this one is also, uh, so there's different kind of class, uh, uh, types, like um, around uh, two to three, like create is, is creating a uh, coupling with the new tags when the n submission numbers of photos is around 2,000 to 3,000. But for example, like, um, yeah, this one, like the cafe test is like uh, 5,000 uh, photo uh, submissions of numbers of photos, they try to coupling with the new tags, but then it's, it's gradually decaying. So, um, so not just looking at the no, uh, no, novelty of each tags, but looking at the combinatorial uh, properties of, of tagging is, is interesting to, to understand how uh, potentially those uh, web services are creating novelties. Then, um, well, so this is like uh, just checking with a, so horizontal line is a number of distinct tags, and then vertical, vertical line is the number of distinct pairs. So it should be in between, uh, proportional to the number of distinct tags, and then also the uh, maximum numbers of, of the pairing, which is n to the, to the second. So 
So actually, it's number of distinct pairs is not um, just proportional to the distinct tags, but it's some different kind of exponent. It's not, you know, everything is coupled, but it's in between them. It's, uh, and then also the, the delicious and flicker and the room clip also has the same uh, exponents. So that should be some sort of universal exponent, but we, should have, we don't understand why this is also emerging into this uh, exponent. And then <clears throat> the second thing is uh, we're interested in who are creating new tags, right? So <clears throat> not just you know, looking into the tags, this time we're looking into the, each users who are creating new tags. So we're picking up uh, uh, users uh, who submitted more than 100 uh, submissions. We are measuring the distance between two users by looking into the uh, profiles or what kind of tags they are submitted. And if this user and this user has the same profiles, means that they are using the same tags for, for uh, submission, submitting their photos. I said these are the um, are close, they are very similar to each other. But if they are submitting different tags, means that they are very different from each other. And it looks like, um, then, first of all, what we found is, after a certain period of time, then there's a, um, like, uh, this figure tells you that, uh, oh, oh, basically, but by the way, so the, the similarity of this user and this user is measured by the profile distribution. So we are using, a, a symmetrized uh, Kalbach library uh, distributions. And then we noticed that after critical size of the number of users, there's a three, some clusters emerges. So we don't know what this one is, but the users are automatically, you know, organizing different number of clusters, like flocking behaviors in a, in a uh, void game, void, void uh, simulation. Um, and these three clusters have the similar profiles. And those similar profiles emerges after certain <laughs> critical size. It would be interesting. And then we looked into the who is creating a new uh, novel tags. Right? Then it looks like um, the similar users are creating more tags, new tags. So people might think that um, inhomogeneous community is creating more novel tags. But this one tells you similar users are making clusters, and they are creating new tags. So, um, well, this conference is a very interdisciplinary, but if we want to make a new ideas, maybe you have to have a homogeneous, <laughs> use, homogeneous researchers, then, then tend to you know, compete each other and to create new tags. That's what, uh, at least from this uh, um, uh, data analysis tells you that homogeneous uh, clusters uh, tend to generate more new tags than in homogeneous clusters. So the more final comment is that um, I was interested in uh, Dave Arkley's uh, definition of indefinite uh, scalability. And then this void model and also web systems is we don't change any basic rules, but just increasing the population size. But there is a critical uh, transition from one critical size to the other critical size. And that happens. Uh, each like a 10 to the third to the 10 to the fourth uh, sizes. So every different three orders changes, like 1,000 to 1 million to uh, 1 billion. There might emerge some something. I don't know what this one is. Maybe that's super organism. Then super organism means that you can renormalize it, right? Once you playing with something and then flocking behavior emerges, those flocking flockings are taken as one single particle. Then again, those particles are interacting with each other. Then after like one billion particles means 1,000 flocking behaviors, that also changes the structures. So there's some super organism that emerges after each like a three to fourth orders. It's, well, but still it's very super hypothetical, but if you know our bodies you know, from the cells to uh, organs to human scales to society, if there is some uh, transitions, because not because of the uh, different functions, but just in terms of the sizes, changes, and then I think, uh, you know, open-ended evolution is necessary. I mean, one of the ingredients of having open-ended evolution is um, 
a good um, simple basic rules, but you can apply the same rules to the to the different sizes. But you can apply the sizes. So systems should be indefinitely scalable, right? But you are, by just increasing the population size, the open end evolution is just emerges for free. That's what I. If this is true, I mean, at least from, from my simulations and observations of the data structures, uh, web services, it, it's true that, you know, so indefinite scalability is necessary for open evolution. So that's why I think this argument is uh, interesting to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, question here. So it's interesting that you see it in voids, but actually in turbulent flow, um, people have looked at you know several orders of magnitude of scaling, yeah. and you don't see it. No, no. I so don't. why voids but not turbulence? Um, well, the first reason is because the parameter set is different, but maybe uh, the void system is just off phase transitions, mm -hmm. so it's not uh, scalable, right? Because it's a, a little bit of of transition point. So that once you increase the size, then it changes the behavior. That's what I think. Okay, I'll think about it. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So you talked about the um, uh, you call the tags, and when you only have like um, a tag that's the size of one, not the pairs. Um, one of the things that makes me think about when it, it it sort of like plateaus is maybe it's because you know the number of words that are available is finite, you know, it's like you have to create new words in order to create uh, a, a um, you know, a constant scaling for yeah. um, these tags. So have you thought about like how the number of um, words that are available in a language has to do with um, innovation and open-endedness here? Because, you know, it's like the number of users is infinite, but the number of tags is finite. <laughs> Well, is it true? I mean, yeah. users... Our population size is also finite, right? Um, <laughs> but I was just interested in, you know, um, I'm not quite sure whether, um, even if the number of targets is, is finite, but combinatorial power is, is important. That's why I think it's a transition is very important, right? Combinatorial uh, complexity is replacing the uh, single, you know, innovation of the of single tags. That's why the... Uh, language in the real world is important, and also in the web services, it's very important to have a combinatorial complexity, combinatorial no nobility. But I, yeah, that's that's why my, my uh, would, explanation. Would you also say that uh, if you got to a combinatorial um, of like maybe a thousand tags, people mm -hmm. are putting a thousand tags on the one picture, would you would you call that open-endedness? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, you know, uh, in order to increase uh, uh, to to put novel tags. Um, you have to have the, another pair to couple it with. So once this one appears, then people motivated to make a new tag to combine with it each, to, to, to with the tag. That's the one of the engine why you can create new tags. Otherwise, if you always put tags by yourself, then you cannot create new tags. Right? That's my interpretation. Well, so I love this. Uh, uh, but <clears throat> uh, uh, depending on exactly how you do the Boyd's rules, mm. there is an inherent spatial scale uh, in the neighborhood that the Boyd's look at to see who they're influenced by. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I presume you held that constant as you did this scaling. The distance for the neighborhood did not change. Well, this does not change, of course, it's uh, applying the same rules to the different sizes. Right? right, but if the rule was expressed as one one millionth of the size of the universe, mm -hmm. then it would have scaled automatically. Yeah, Whereas yeah. I expect what you did was you said it's going to be 100 meters in simulated space, whatever right. it is. And therefore, the coupling got weaker uh, as you increased the size of the space and the number of, of agents mm -hmm. like that. Which I don't think is a problem for the case that you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. But it does make you wonder whether perhaps in the turbulence case mm -hmm. there is a more scale-free expression of the mechanics mm -hmm. that automatically goes up with the scale of the space. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, that's right. Um, 
Well, that's what I'm uh, exactly I'm thinking that maybe the next uh, phase transition happens once you have more packed, you know, phase emerges. Well, yeah, instead of you know increasing the pressure that we can expect more different kind of uh, ice state in the water. I mean, if you increase the sizes up to some South Hudson level, there are different kinds of phase transition happens, and then another compact flocking behavior emerges, then different kind of fluctuation emerges. So that's yeah, that's what I'm uh, hoping. And then also, but but in a real uh, void, the bird flocking, they say there's only 21. It's always fixed 21 neighbors. And I don't know why this one is, but that's what uh, uh, that's a piece of people. Yeah, 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 maybe. Yes. Yeah, another question there. Very, very nice, interesting stuff. Um, somehow this self-organization of all these patterns at different scales, right, especially in this point thing, right, I mean, we know that this somehow happens in a way, like, look at the universe, right, somehow we started with all this, with, 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 a, big, with a big bang and all this, all these little particles, and then they form galaxies and and everything in yeah. this kind, a little bit like what you show here, in a way. Yeah, yeah like a void, yes. Yeah, in, in a way, huh? yeah. But then somehow I'm a little bit wondering and puzzled how we should take that over to some, you know, what, what, what would be our, our best take on, on, on taking this and putting it into whatever kind of a life situation that we want to do? Because so, somehow I think we are looking more into uh -huh. making individual somehow mm -hmm. more structured and not having this kind of gigantic scale at which things yeah. happen. Yeah, so I remember that when the Mark uh, did his artificial life conference in 2006 or 4, mm -hmm. and then we had a tense uh, AI life problems, and then I proposed one which was why the life emerges only from the, uh, more than 100 nanoscale to less than uh, 100 meters or something, mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. 10 meters. <laughs> so uh, that should be ex explained. So this is uh, against uh, indefinite scale, but it's scalable, right? Mm -hmm. Only in, it could just in this scale. And that I was thinking that maybe there should be some, as I said, super organisms. So it should be automatically discretized into different scales. Mm -hmm. And then why have to be you know, disc discriminated into different scales? So I thought maybe there's some, some um, some explanation to this, and then this one tells you that uh, the uh, fluctuations cannot, you know, maintain. It's fluctuations is to the, to the is a function of the scale, mm -hmm. and only for this scale that fluctuations goes up and goes down, and then different scales, different fluctuations is is uh, emerges for the different uh, um, different fluctuations, different kinds of fluctuation is associated with the different scales. So, as I said you know, from the cell to the organ to the individual scale to the society, why this society scale and why the organs is like this scale and why it's from this, this cell should be explained in one way or other. So artificial life is, is not a physical, I mean, I always, you know, I'm, I'm from uh, statistical physics, but physics is always inter interested in scalable universal classes. But the uh, biological system is non-scalable, non-universal, right? But maybe the universal class is in the your final sizes. So I think the final, final size effect is about having a scale, uh, super organisms. So each, you know, the scale should be discretized into several scales, and which I think is, is important to understand why we have this kind of, you know, different layers, different hierarchical structures, and different hierarchical structures should be explained from using, a, we, we don't have to change the rules. That's what we artificial life people try to do, right? Different layers has a different rules, but as Dave says, we don't have to change the rules, but have to use the, the same rules to infinite scales. However, the different behavior emerges in different layers. That's what I want to see. So the, that's, that's my uh, take home message from my Mark. Thank you. Yeah. We've got uh, time for one more question, if, we, if the next speaker could also sit up. One more question. Takashi. So do you think that like, one of the major problems in, in just like open-ended evolution stuff is, is literally just the scalability of these kind of simulations? Like, like you said, in physics, it's, a lot of times it's uh, in, the, in the thermodynamic limit you find these transitions. Right. 
Right. So if if the problem is that just to make these compu or these simulations tractable, we sort of uh, model like we, we we start mesoscopically at, instead of like at the I don't know particle level, and then we do that on like a small finite size system, then we lose these transitions and we lose these sort of emergent things. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's like because it kind of like that's the that's the take home message for me was sort of like the scalability is sort of like a major problem. And you agree, or is yeah, that what you're scalability say? is a major problem. I think you know. Um, yes. So uh, we have to um, don't take in, don't take you know uh, infinite time limit or don't take uh, infinite size limit. Right? I mean, don't take thermodynamic limit. But we have to stay in uh, final final size, final scale. Then probably there are some interesting uh, phenomena still exist that we have to focus on. That that's my yeah. So you're right. Okay. Thank you, Takashi. Thanks so much.